Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. As the title suggests, I'm going to take one hour's time, and I'm going to create a game. And in that one hour's time, I'm going to create a multiplayer game, and it's not going to be perfect. You know, one hour's time is a really short time to actually do anything. So, um, what I have done is I'm starting with a blank copy of my simple multiplayer team template so that I don't have to worry about that and is it cheating yes and no um, it will probably take me an hour to actually create that by itself but if anybody wants to try this um, challenge you're more than welcome to um, if you don't have the uh, simple multiplayer team template and just want to make a single player game within one hour's time just to see what you can come up with it's a good challenge to get your mind working um, clear your thoughts from your current project you're working on and have a little bit of fun see what you can come up with you see I've done nothing to this project whatsoever um, I'm gonna talk about what I'm gonna do before I actually start adding anything in or start doing any work um, if you're not familiar with the simple multiplayer steam template it is something that I created a couple of years ago and it is a basically it's a menu system you, you'll need Steam running in the background, and if you run it as a standalone game, you'll see what happens here. Um, and this is an hour game, so this is going to be my my challenge. So whatever comes up, you're going to have your Steam username and avatar will pop up. Access Steam community right here. You can just go to single player, and yay, you can play with yourself. I mean, by yourself. You can escape, go back to the main menu, or resume game. Uh, you can host a multiplayer or find a multiplayer session whenever you click on find you know if nothing pops up immediately hit find lobby it'll search for 10 seconds if something comes up then you can go ahead and you'll see a join button and you'll go in from there if you want to go ahead and host one click on host put in a name for your server hit make and there you go and you'll have an actual multiplayer other people can find your game and join you it's something that I sell on uh, my Discord channel. 20 bucks, US currency. Click it easy to use, and currently set up for 423. I do have some of the other versions, but let me know if you need a version other than 423. Alright, so the plan for this one is to try to do a side scroller. With a little bit of a twist, it will be multiplayer and we'll start adding in some objects and items into the game that require a second player to be able to continue so this is not going to be something that you can play playing with yourself you're going to need a friend to play with you so what will happen is there'll be like a bridge we'll say that um, one person has to stand on the trigger to activate it and the bridge will go down you walk across and whenever you get to the other side there'll be a, a, the same kind of trigger on the other side that will then maintain the bridge open because if you step off the trigger the bridge will will go open again and you can't get across so you're gonna need to have a friend help you with these different obstacles so I figured that's gonna be simple enough to get started with and to be able to accomplish with a one hour time limit so, um, I'm watching the clock here. I'm going to wait until um, my stream counter says five minutes, and then I'm going to go ahead and start. But so we got about 35 seconds. So with that, it's going to be simple enough. I'm just going to need um, two players to spawn. Um, I will have the new Pi window open for testing, but one screen will be off to another monitor. It'll be for my time whenever I'm testing. Um, I may shrink them down and, and pull them into the same window. We'll see how it goes. But, alright. we got 10 seconds and I'll go ahead and start. So, let's see how it works out. I may actually add a, a shooting element later on, but we shall see. And, let's get started. Yeah, thanks bud. I'm going to add feature content pack. I'm going to do a side scroller. Add to project. And I'm going to go ahead and add starter content. Hey, Frank. 
you know, I'm kind of challenging myself. I'm trying to get myself back into the to the right frame of mind. I'm still a little bit muddy. Still having some difficulty with um, my jaw from my botched dental work. All right, so quickly go to the starter map for no, not that um, side scroller example map just so we can see that we have first off we need to get rid of this and we have this guy here are you lined up correctly Let's run selected viewport scratch you um, game mode should have been side scroller game mode and that should be okay let's hit play and so we got a mouse cursor so you can only go left and right with the side scroller so if you haven't done the side scroller before it's very simple don't like the camera um, we'll, we'll play with the camera later on but um, if I were to try to do two players now uh, what will happen we're going to stack on top of each other. I'm going to go ahead and push the server off to a different monitor. So, you see we're going to have some interference issues with each other. So, we're going to need another player spawn. And see what happens for passing in front of each other. Because now, the server is still able to move. So that may or may not be a bad thing to kind of create lanes so you don't have to jump over each other to kind of get by. Alright, so let's roll with that. Um, but I will get player start here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's going to be a bit of a problem. So let's actually move the um, like that. So we have a different start point, and we're still hitting each other. Um. I guess the uh, the main issue is if you look at how wide the um, the game objects are here. Details wise, we're at 109. We're snapping. Let's do. You're at. We'll put you at zero so we can take a look. Um, Where did you put your zero? Wow. Okay, so... 1,200... And... Let's add... 100 to your... spot, and... At a hundred to your spot. Now that's probably going to put it to where, yeah, they're not walking on the uh, the objects, but that's because the objects are just too small. But we can fix that. Everything is a little on the thin side, so if you look at the scale. And this is a waste of my time here. All right, so let's actually just start clicking on some of these things. And let's change the scale to 
three. Now, the wider Still not convinced. What do you think um, for the player? Should we stack them so that you have to jump over each other, or not so much? I'm actually going to move them a little bit closer together. Just because face them in opposite directions and spread them apart. So still get by each other, and it doesn't have to be as wide for the uh, the objects. All right, so that'll work. Okay, yeah. Um, jump over each other. Let's move them back to 1200. So yeah, when you bump into each other, you're going to have to jump over each other. So, um, can I just take these back to one X? So now, you actually have to work together, and, you know, even though this is just a, um, if you land on top of each other's heads, you kind of bounce off. And you need to go back to one. Alright, so... Actual map elements here. Let's go ahead and save all. Save selected. Play one more time. So, see we have a mouse cursor bug. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Um... So we're going to need a couple things here. Um, yep, there's a whole lot of stuff in here. Movement input and jump. And one of the things that's going to slow me down on everything is my OCD for clean blueprints. So, um, first thing I'm going to do here is event, begin play, and we're going to go ahead and confirm our game mode. Set input to game only. Get player controller. And we need to set show mouse cursor defaults. So that's going to ensure that we're in the correct game mode and we don't have um, editor preferences. Come on, you piece of crap. Hurry up. Main window. Loading and saving. Disable. Thank you. Okay. So now when we hit play, there is no mouse cursor. I can just go right in and start playing. Now it's only going to be affecting anything in to play in editor mode. So now what I'll do is I'll actually go back into one person and select a viewport so that I can start creating some of these new um, pieces here. All right, so I'm going to need a material. Let's go with, um, for now, concrete tiles, BSP geometry, box collision, And where's my material? In fact, it's actually 
So we're not actually working on this map. Let's actually go ahead and create a new map. File, new level. And we'll just do default. Don't need you. You three things can go down. Details, we need side scroller game mode. And let's hit play. So there we have our, our player, and we can actually start creating things. All right. Save all. Go to my default maps right here. Build map. And we'll do a save all one more time. So, what we're going to end up doing here is make sure our player is at 000. zero, zero. Yep, we're good. Move all this shit into the map shit folder. So we got a clean slate to work with. All right, so let's go back to our geometry. There we go. And make sure we're zeroed out. And what we want to do here is create the uh, the first object here we're going to create this as a um, a platform and it only needs to be 50 high that's good enough and then what we'll do is control C and control V put a second one in And let's just make sure that, um, all right, we can jump a pretty long ways. I may actually you know, change the jump. Um, let's put it at 1600. Let's make sure that our player can't jump from one to the other. So yeah, just enough to where you fall through. Then let's go ahead and set up in our mesh folder asset mesh and I'll take these two guys in my brush settings go here create static mesh and asset mesh gap um, I didn't measure it Static mesh underscore gap. Now, measuring wise, I've got this guy right here, which was my little mesh tool. Was just kind of curious on to what my gap was here. Now, these are not going to have um, collisions, and if we look, simplified collision, nothing. And if I add in a box collision, it's going to encompass both of them. I don't want that, so I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to do that. And I can create my own custom collision this way. It does not like to do that. Perfect. All right, so that's one of them. So I'll do another one, which is box collision. Shrink it down. But it'd be nice to have a copy and paste. Damn, that was perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And then come over here, go to... Uh, do, 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 Where the hell is it? Um, 
general settings. Change the light map resolution to 64, light map coordinate index 1, and save. Now we go in there and see we need to rebuild our lighting because we have a new static mesh. So, oh no, I fell. So just not quite enough to, to get across. So that's perfect. Now we can drop that now anywhere we want to on the map and that's going to give us the gap. So what we need now is a bridge that will go across there and probably go about this a couple different ways. Um, at first it won't be as pretty. So let's just make it functional. So let's go back to our materials and Uh, screw it. Let's grab that so it looks like wood. And we'll do another box collision. A box collision. Uh, box geometry. And let's change the height to 5. And we're only going to make this in the X 100. We just need it good enough. And now we're going to see one thing on the material. Select it and rotate 90. And now it looks like it's facing the right direction. Then we'll go back to this again. The Y, which is going to be our left and right. 1,000. Damn, that was um, not bad. A um, little long, so let's make it um, 900. Screw it, let's go a little bit more. 800. And we'll do so it's got some overlap. 850. So now we got a little bit of overlap to it, so if we try to walk across there, then... Yay, no problem. Alright, so... What would be really cool with that is... Well, besides the fact that it changed my freaking rotation on... My planks there. There we go. So we got wooden planks. We've got a temporary bridge. So now we actually need to save that as a static mesh. And we're going to create static mesh. Go to my asset folder mesh. And SM gap plank. And we'll go to it. And we need to look at our collisions, which we don't have any. So we'll add a simple box collision. There we go. And 64 and 1. So now we have a static mesh that we can drop into the map and put that into whatever we want. So we can actually build this into a blueprint with, we'll say, a pressure plate here, which will drop it in place, or do something, or make it appear, and then, for right now, to, for simplicity, make it appear or disappear. So that comes into, do we want a spawn actor, or do we want to um, uh, just set visibility, or how we want to do this. We'll do two players, All right, so, th yeah, that's going to be a problem. Um, all right, still stuck on each other there. Yeah, 
Yes, he's not even walking on the damn thing. Because he got shoved off to the side. Um, and that's unfortunate. Really need to um, write in a, uh, a random... A, an actual spawner script. All right, so let's do this. Let's get on with it. Um, we can actually take these guys out. But we'll leave the gap in here. We'll just get rid of the plank for now so that um, we can actually build the functionality to it. So my assets folder I'm just kind of wasting time here. And we'll do gadgets. Actor. Um, gap plank and we need a static mesh and that's that we might have changed the um the rotation but that's fine And since it didn't pop down and it's sticking through the ground a little bit, let's actually raise it up by five. Make it ten. Uh, make it seven. Make it so. Close enough for government work. All right, so. Event begin play, which we don't care about either. Compile and save. We need to do a um, we don't want it to be active as soon as it comes into the map. Um, turn off visibility. So we don't see it, but it's still there. Um, so we'll have to disable collision. So let's actually uncheck that. Come on, save. Event begin play. Get a reference to that. Let's actually rename it. Bridge. On begin play, we want to turn off visibility and turn off collision. So doing it this way, we can see that it's there in the map. We go to play, it's not there. We try to walk over, we fall and die. So now either of a couple different ways we can actually go ahead and create the pressure pads and make it to where they're visible so I think that's what I'm going to do for right now even though it's probably not the best way to do it we're going to add a cube and we're going to call this pad 1 and Point one control C and control V, so we put a second one in. Now we need um, box collisions. Call this trigger. And one point five by one point five. 
Control C and Control V. So we get a second one. And on component begin overlap and on component end overlap. And we are using what as our player character is side scroller character. But simplify this cast two character. So it doesn't matter who's stepping on it. As long as it's a character of some sort. Um, we'll grab bridge. What I'll probably end up doing is creating custom event for that and running replication on it. So let's actually see what it looks like first. And we'll go from there because we need to do both of these. Control C and Control V. that reference there. And this will be yes, and this will be um, collision enabled. So now if we look at it, we actually have a pressure pad here and there. And if we come over here, it's not there, now it is. If I step off of it, it goes away. So we need a second person to be able to play this. So two new pi. All right, jump over you. Turn this on, and then now I can actually go across here, and I have no problem. But what happens if I step off of here? Kiss my ass, you're dead. <laughs> okay, so we just need to do the same thing on the other one. And we can just copy and paste that in there. So we'll do trigger one, add event, on component again, and end. Control C and Control V. And that's our first obstacle done. Ah, oh, that's sick and ass. Um, all right. Client turns the bridge on. So let's actually, since you guys can see the client, let's take the server and turn the bridge on. And we'll jump over here, and now, as the, oh, um, there we go, now I can walk across. So, minor little problem with that, which I'm not really worried about so much. But at least we now have the ability to turn the bro shit um, thing on and off. So it's glitchy, but it works. Um, we'd have to come back in here and do, like, is valid or some other stuff. But let's go ahead and save all. We have our first obstacle. Um, just for moving on with things for right now then we have something that we can plan with and come back in and do other ones later if we need to, which we will need to. Um, let's go ahead and create a new level. Um, default is fine.
just because I don't want to see them. And we'll come back over here. We're not going to put any terrain in. If you follow your dead, and what will have to happen is um, a method of respawning, creating checkpoints. Um, we'll see if we have time to do that. This is where you spend a lot of your time doing stuff. And let's go ahead and do grass, geometry, box. And we'll start with making sure we're on side scroller or details panel for our box we just created. We'll do zero, zero, and we should do negative five. And do five on height. All right, so we have our starting point here, and change to this. And we'll do that. That way we can drop things in on zero, or in this case 100 because it's a half height of Z. And but we'll do this to 100, and that means we can drop this to 50, and it'll line up perfectly with the floor. And we need another player start, so we can go to basic player start. And we'll do 200. So now yeah, we got that, and we can start putting in some platforms, doing some other stuff here. Um, just wanted this as a starting platform. It's somewhere I can refer back to as my my default. Um, So it doesn't really matter what I'm using here. Um, go back to my geometry. reason why I'm doing geometries is I don't have to worry about lighting. <sighs> Again, let's go with 5 and... Let's put this at negative 5. It's probably the wrong one, but... Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. We'll just leave it at zero. And that's where it needs to be. Um, and we'll just make this in the Y thousand. And then we can go into our there's our gap. And and yes, I could have just sl slid it over, but it's just easier to, to look at it from this side. And you know what? That's fine. And then we can go into our gadgets and... Zero it that way. And I could go into the blueprints and change that, but I'm not going to. So now if we play, bridge comes up. Now, what if you're playing with yourself? You have no way of getting this bridge to stay. Um, we're not worried about that for right now. Um, but you could actually just do this as just leaving it on. And you turn off the... Um, when you leave, it just stays on. So, essentially, we could do the same thing here. And duplicate this. And...
Actually, no. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to change this to where when I put it into the map, um, and this is, come on, damn it, take forever. Um, we're going to add a variable in. Um, stay open. And compost, save. And the only thing we really need to do here is on the between here, we'll add a branch in here and on component begin overlap. We'll put a branch node in. Um, for the sake of things, um, let's change the name of that. Um, hide on exit so that we don't have to change anything else. So we just plug this in and we can do this. That actually doesn't need to be in here. It needs to be on the end overlap. Because it doesn't matter, whenever we step on it, we want it to show up. And we'll do the same thing here. Let's drag you out. Alright, so with that, first off, we want to expose that variable so that we can actually select that in game in the editor. So if it's true that it hides on exit, then it goes away. If not, then it shouldn't go anywhere. So if I now go to this, hide on exit, yes, no, um, with it set at no, if I walk over, it should spawn and it'll stay there. But if we go back and hit hide on exit is true, we hit play, go across it, and it goes away. So now we actually can use the same one for multiple things. All right. We're okay on time. So let's actually go back to our materials. Go back to our grass. And we'll make that five and zero. Let's do some concrete tiles. And I think all I'm really going to work on right now is primary functionality. And control C, control V. 150, let's see, 250, we should be able to walk under that. Let's say 26, give us a 100 gap. Let's try to 
that. Um, and for now, for testing, we can turn off that, and that way we don't have to worry about having a second player in for testing. We know that it works, and... Alright, so that's that. If we try to jump over, we, we have our bridge, so we're safe there. Um, that works. We're good to go. Save all. Um, and we'll do this as level underscore zero one. And click to go into main menu. Change the map. Zero one. Copy that. And do that. Compile and save. Now, I want to go ahead and do side scroller character. We got our event begin play. Let's do one more thing on our event begin play. Let's grab a reference to our mesh. And get actor or let's see. Get world location. Let's create a new variable. Call it spawn point. And we we'll want that to be a vector. Compile save. And then we will set spawn point to that on event begin play. Okay. Now, another thing that I'm going to want to create is. Off map return lack of a better term for it. Um, and all we're going to do is add in a box collision get rid of everything else and what we want to happen here is We're using side scroller, so we cast two side scroller character because that's all that we care about. Because we have a variable to, to deal with. Set actor location and. Get spawn point. So if you fall off the map, it will teleport you back to your initial spawn point. And then we will actually create a checkpoint. So right now, do 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 do. Hey, look, bridge. Hey, it's awesome. Hey, look. Oh shit, we fell off. The, nothing can happen because we don't have any way of dealing with it. So if we put this in here and set this at zero, zero, and zero. And we change our scale to 100. And screw it, might as well make it a little bit wider. Just in case. And we'll grab this and drop it down hell this I don't want to ever have to deal with moving that around ever again. So we have play. Do 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 oh, there we go. So we have a way of handling if we fall out of the map. So what I'd actually like to do though is um one more thing to it. Just because what happens is whenever you're you're moving, you're going to continue to move. So let's 
set our movement mode to none so it will stop us from moving we're on a delay of three seconds because you were a dummy you fell out the map you need to have a delay anyway and plug you in plug you in and we'll change this to walking actually no let's set your location Let's do it that way. We'll set your location and then make you wait your th three seconds. Let's say actually make it two. And then allow you to start walking again. So if we jump out of the map, yay. Oh no. Um, yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen. Um, spawn point. Break that. Well, they're pretty much about the same. Uh, when you talk about peer to peer um, and client server, um, if you, it's more of a peer to peer, you know, client server is basically all that's happening anyway. And it's just a matter of whether it's, um, you know, the host is actually the, the server or if it's a dedicated server. is what the usual point is here. All right, so we do that, and here we go, and now we can walk again. So you can see we're, we're hovering over the ground just a hair, but that's okay. Yep. Now we can walk again. Do this and oh no! Oh, let's get over here. Oh crap! We fell out of the map. Oh damn! We gotta start all the way from from one again. So let's go back over here and let's say that if we got to this point, let's create a checkpoint. So that's the next thing right here and blueprint actor checkpoint BP. Again, all we need is a box collision. We don't need any of you. Compose, save, begin overlap, and cast our side scroller character. We want two so that we don't have to keep dealing with adding a hundred to it and all that kind of crap. This thing is always underground anyway, compile and save. We want to add a scene component. And I'm going to set this at 100. Now, I go to my event graph and I get a reference to my scene. We're going to make a scene. Get world location and now we can get our set spawn point to this and just because we want to have a little bit of flair we want to know that something happened um, I don't have a lot of cool sounds and junk like that um, Screw it, we'll just throw the explosion on there. And we'll do play sound at location. We're not worried about attenuations right now. 
And we're going to use Explosion Q. We'll just use the same location. And our checkpoint. And zero that out. And let's just make it three by two. So now as we're going through here, and we decide that we want to fall off the map, we're going to go back to our player start. But if we go over here, make it across, Yay! So now we have a checkpoint. All right, so we're just about at the um, hour mark. We actually have twelve minutes. So now, if we fall off, we're going to respawn right back here again. So we have our checkpoint. Yes, it is not a really awesome, super cool, amazing game, but it is a game. Um, control C, Control V. Hey, I didn't say it was going to be a great game in an hour, but within this one hour's time, what have we accomplished here? We have to raise that shit up, because uh, we can't get underneath it. Now, that will also prevent somebody from cheat jumping to get across. Alright, so that's going to get us going for the majority of the functionality. Um, whenever it comes to fixing stuff here. Now, here's another option that we could do. Is if we enter from here, then go across, we exit across there, make the bridge go away. If we're always going to be going this way, do we ever need to go back across? Um, to modify functionality, and that's the thing, whenever you're creating the base portion of your game, this is very bare bones. There's not much to it. There's only a couple things that are actually functions. And... Let's see, we're in a second, and that's one thing that's going to have to be fixed there is the, um, let's change the functionality of this, um, hide on exit, there we go. So we got our client here, we're going to run a client over go across here, but we see the bridge goes away. So let's actually let the server... Hey, how you doing? Come across here. And that's where the problem starts. Because now... Client can't get over. So this is where I'm assuming you're going to have to actually use your brain a little bit. Now the client can step on this, and the server can go across, and go across the bridge. So if we come over here, and we exit, it's gone. So we'll get our server to step on it. So now our client can go across the bridge. Yay, and there's much rejoicing. Now you're over here, okay. 
I just made my checkpoint. And client just made a checkpoint. So if client goes back over here and do, 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 oh shit, I fell off. There you go. We're I'm back. So the one thing I'm going to do really quickly is off map return. We've got our delay there, but let's go ahead and um, do, 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 do. just run one more delay in here just to to pretty fight. We'll add a one second delay that way. Hello. Can you can you come on sometime today, please? Fucking swarm agent. Alright, so Clan. So we're gonna walk over here and step there to get the bridge to close. My friend is gonna come over here and stand on the pad so that the client can actually walk across the bridge. Well, the server now needs to have a way for getting across. So I'm going to come over here and reactivate the bridge. Thank you so kindly. Hey, look, checkpoint. Yay. Looks kind of tacky, but whatever. Yay, kiss my ass, go away. So what I'll do for the off-map return is we'll drop that down a little bit more. Yay! And now we can return. All right. All right, so what do you guys think? Yeah, it's not some awesome super shooter game, but it's enough to get the, um... See, here's the problem is now I step off of it, it disappears, and you got to return back to it. All right, thank you. So that was the the basic components of creating a game in an hour. What do you guys think? It's a game. But is it a game? Um, let's go ahead and do... Uh, let's do a full build. Let's wrap it up. Got level one is set as the actual thing. There's no end goal right now. Um, and here's the thing: is just because we're currently using the side scroller character, you could get to a certain point and decide that um, maybe I want to go back to the first person or a third person character or first person character, whatever. You're not always stuck to that. You can actually force change that. You know, Star Wars, you'd force change it. Um, so let's go to save all, make sure everything's saved. Get everything down, go to our maps folder, go to our main menu map, and one player standalone game. So playing by yourself, it, the problem's going to run into you have nobody to help you. So by adding that little bit of functionality in, then it's not going to be as much fun. You're just walking through looking at the map. So if you hit single player and go into it, there's no way to, to accomplish that. So, one quick thing. Um, we did not add in... the exit and I am just going to go through and cheat 
for the essence of time. I'm going to play our character. I already have the escape menu built in. Go back into our side scroller character. Add that in there. Compile, save. Now we have a way of getting back out. Um, so we can go to our map that we created, our level one. Need to go in here to this guy, uncheck hide on exit, and then we'll do um, file save current as level one underscore one p and I'm going to go ahead and copy that and then I'm going to save save again do a quick build and we're done just go into the, um, the main menu widget and change that for the single player Alright, so for a, a, a side-scroller game that requires you to actually have cooperative element of um, single-player button requires you to actually have help from somebody else. I wouldn't really take the time to um, do a full build on this right now and, and publish this somewhere it's just not enough playable content but for one hour's time being able to create the basics um, to get going with so now if we do one standalone game we should be good to go questions comments so if you go into single player so if you want to play with yourself this will stay now checkpoint so you just keep building more and more complex things to um, get your player to get from point A to point B with checkpoints involved so that you have the ability to reset as you go and hit escape Resume game or go back to the main menu. A multiplayer host. Now, in the multiplayer version, you're required to have help to get across this. So, this is just, you know, on and off. Alright, bud. Take care. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping up this video now. This is the. The, the one hour mark for the one hour game in one hour I don't want someone to look at the, the thing without actually watching the video and say oh but it's an hour and ten minutes you lied I'm not actually building anything anymore I started at five minutes after and on the um, the clock here and Alright, so go back here, go back to main menu, single player. Being that it's a, a side scroller, you know, you could add a lot of vertical element to it, you could add a whole lot of horizontal element to it, you could get creative and do um, procedurally generated areas, but for one hour, you just wanted to get the basic functionality done. And what I'd like to do is a follow-up video on this. And, um, yeah, once you get them rigged correctly, it shouldn't be that hard. Once you get them rigged, and that's, that's the, the, the main part, um, get them sized correctly and rigged correctly. Um, I've seen a couple of videos, tutorials online on using, like, Blender and other stuff for actually, um, exporting the UE4 mannequin, the default mannequin, so that you actually have that skeleton, and then rig your character with the UE4 mannequin skeleton is your best possible option. Because the fact that, I know, I've got over a, 
well over a thousand animations that I can dump into a project. And if they're using this UE4 mannequin skeleton, then it takes me seconds to get them working. In fact, once I actually have, if I know that my character is already rigged to the UE4 mannequin skeleton, then I can just drag them in there, drag the character in there, and uh, um, tell which skeleton to use, and I can tell it to use the freaking UE4 mannequin skeleton. They can share the same skeleton, just like I do with the uh, Cindy Studios characters. And I can just rip out, um, uh, add new packs in, in no time. Once I've got one pack installed, then that's not a problem. See, on the solo version, I could have re-rigged it to where whenever I go across this checkpoint, this, this part here, it turns off the bridge. But, no big deal. You can rig up things with timelines to where they rotate and fall, or use gravity to rotate and fall, or what have you. So there's so many things you can do on, on this right here. Um, there's knowing that um, you, you get the checkpoint every time you, you jump on it. Uh, I wouldn't leave the sound on there, honestly, but... All right. Well, I guess like I could do a follow up with this and actually build a full map, uh, or start building the actual other cool things like water, mud. Um, a while back, I was doing what what I called the, the pitfall challenge of taking the City Studios um, asset and actually creating um, a modernized version of the game Pitfall. So, I may actually restart that project, because the current project that I'm working on, I like it, but how about a multiplayer version of the 80s game Pitfall? Using City Studios characters, and, um, yeah, just, I don't know how you would do the, the swinging vine. I, I've never tried that with uh, jumping up and grabbing hold of something or whatever, but I will have to figure out the the vine part, but essentially that game was a side scroller. Now think about the player start situation here um, for multiplayer. Once the host actually starts, the client's not going to be there yet anyway because they haven't found the game yet. So that shouldn't be a problem with spawning in. So I'm not worried about creating some kind of weird thing. It's only a problem whenever you're running it in the editor. I think that's what I'm going to look at doing is um, starting another another version of this and just call it the um, pitfall. But or just do a retro pitfall. And the whole point of pitfall, if you're not familiar with the the game from the '80s, uh, the original one, essentially you had tar pits, uh, you had a swinging vine, you had water pits, you had alligators or crocodiles in the water that once they closed their mouth you could actually hop from one to the other and use them as stepping stones to get across the water pit. Um, the tar pits, if you fell into them, you just sunk and died. Um, there were scorpions that were moving around in the underground areas. You had to jump over the scorpions. There were just little things like that. But what do you guys think about the uh, the idea of a multiplayer cooperative based um, side scroller? These are all options that I'm planning on using in my my primary project um, with uh, Stream Party to be able to obtain gold to buy premium content in the uh, the game. Say you actually have to complete a multiplayer maze where you actually need somebody else to be able to help you get from point A to point B. It's like with the um, holding the bridge open. Uh, you're going to need someone to come in and help you get across the bridges, things like that. 
And the only way that you can get to the end of the maze is to have help from another player. And then by the time the two of you actually go through and complete the obstacles in the, the full maze, you can both get the gold. Or both get the prize. So yes, doing these side projects like this right here um, are actually going to be helpful for my main project. But it's nice to create a, another project to actually come in here and build it first um, and see how it goes. The other one that I was thinking about doing for the one hour build, um, I'll open up that project really quickly and eh, it's good and bad. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, for the one hour build game and I actually built the main portion of it within an hour then I was just tinkering back and forth because I didn't feel like doing anything else because I felt like crap um, I started playing around with um, a single player and multiplayer artillery based whatever goofy no point game mode yet The more you tinker with it, you can actually refine. And that's the thing is, you start with the base project and upgrade it from there. So, let's see, which one is this? Um, so, you got, um, this is the client here. Use your WASD to actually adjust the uh, the elevation of your cannon and you can adjust left and right so we'll lower the gun back down and I will shoot at now it does work if I left click it'll fire the gun you have a delayed reaction on, on the, uh, the shell trouble is whenever I put the damn thing in here I mean, very, you can see the the muscle flash from the other gun. You can see the projectile coming, and you take damage whenever you lose all your health. Now you're on fire and smoking. And yes, the server can actually see you smoking over there on... And did a single player version where it was just um just open a new pie. These guys will actually start firing at you. Oh crap, I'm not stuck and hit. Um they will readjust their their elevation. So you see they, they fell short. And whenever they take enough damage, they catch on fire. Oh, damn it. I'm done. <laughs> I can no longer shoot because they killed me. But, yeah, they, they randomly changed their elevation of their guns based on just back and forth. And that's so that they are less likely to kill you on the first shot or hit you on the first shot. I'm dead. So. But if you, you hurry up, you can actually get a delay on your firing, so you can't just sit there and spam shoot. Let's see, after a few seconds, oh shit, that hurt. They catch on fire, let's see. Are on fire for a couple seconds, they just blow up and die. They're no longer able to shoot, and I'm done. Didn't move fast enough. So, that was something I was working on for the one hour project, and yeah, whatever. I was doing a couple other different options too, but yeah. Alright, guys and gals, thank you for watching. If you've got any suggestions for streams and other stuff, let me know. I am going to get out of here and go eat. Catch me on Discord.